and roll and strutting and strolling, ready to go, they thought. And they got out of the gates pretty good early. When Brock Waters going to go to the wing, Reginald Fordham turns the corner, turns his shoulders upfield, and everything else, too. He's going to the house. Pay dirt for number eight, Reginald Fordham. 6 nothing lead because they would get a penalty on the point after attempt, trying to kick it. So they got to move back. They go for the two. They don't get it. Joe Canan says that was a key play in the game. And you'll see why, because Manatee, Breon Carnes with the great misdirection, he hands it off to Mike Blakely, who goes in for the score as he stiff arms some people into the end zone. 7-6 Manatee. Now, Brock Water is going to try it again. And he, he fakes again, and he hits Anthony Whitfield Jr. on the wing, just like their touchdown pass, and it almost went for six. Whitfield, however, gets knocked out of bounds on a great play by Manatee defense. Heads up there. They would get nothing out of it. Another key. Manatee seals the deal. Breon Carnes goes in, and they win it 14-6. They're 2-0. Booker, 1-1. It was two outstanding football teams going toe to toe. Uh, you know, could have turned on field position, a break here or there, and you know we're just real fortunate. Coach Gilmore does a super job. Booker is is a, a class program. They're going to go a long way in 3A. Uh, you know, we, you know I think uh, he's got a really good football team, and, and we're just proud of our kids. We're able to come up with the plays and made the plays we needed to make them. At the end, great football game. They made a play we didn't. Um, you know, that block punt was big. Uh, we had several chances early on to um, get some points on the board. We did not. And uh, maybe um, at the end, they made a play. That's it for Football Friday Night. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, everybody, and we'll see you next Friday. Football Friday night once again is action-packed from Manatee to Charlotte County. Our game of the week features the high-flying offense of the Sarasota Sailors, and they will use all of their weapons trying to knock the Venice Indians, led by standout quarterback Trey Burton from the ranks of the unbeaten. Another game to watch tonight has the Manatee Hurricanes playing at home for the Sugar Cane reunion and attempting to go 3-0 as they take on the Southeast Seminoles. We exercise our right to put the action right at your feet here on Football Friday night. All right, welcome to another edition of Football Friday Night here on ABC7. Our game of the week this week pitted the 1-1 Sarasota Sailors against the undefeated Venice Indians under first-year head coach John Peacock. We start right now with our game of the week coverage. All right, Ben Kaplan joins me from Sarasota High School right now for the game of the week, and he was there for another big game. Ben, talk to me. How's it going out there? Another good game for you? Hey, Don, I'll tell you what, it's like the game of the week magic. We come and touch it, and it turns into a great one. Venice was looking for their first win in this series since 2003, and led by great play by their sophomore quarterback, Trey Burton, the more the younger Indians almost took the uh, more experienced Sailors at their home field. Let's go to the highlights. Sarasota looking for their second win of the season. Venice hoping to start 3-0 for the first time since 2003. And they were looking strong early. After we started with four straight turnovers, Trey Burton, the sophomore quarterback we keep talking about, scampering all the way to the 18. Later on the drive, you see Burton now with his legs. He is going to get it done with his arm. 16 yards to Jamie or to Jimmy Laurie. And that is going to give the Indians an early 6-0 lead. They would miss the point after a 10. After a Sarasota field goal made it 6-3. The Sailors going for it on fourth and two. Rudy Joseph getting it done. He'll pick up the conversion. Then later on the drive, if he ride into the red zone, let him take it in for six. Joseph from 10 yards out gets the score, makes it 10-6 Sailors. So he saw some flavor. Now it's time for a little bit of spice. Senior running back with Darius Goggins gets stopped going right. He's going to go left and goes by the entire Venice defense. 40 yards. Look at him go. Makes it 16 6 Sarasota. They too would miss the point after attempt, however. After Venice added another touchdown, we're still in the second quarter. Sarasota quarterback Casey Kelly looking deep for his favorite target, Robin Rothenbach, but picked for the third time of the first half. And Venice would turn that mistake into some more points. 16-13 at this point. 
Time is running down in the first half. Eric Congelosi, he's going to go off the crossbar, bar, good from 26 yards, 16-6 at the break. Second half, Sailors are going to run it some more. Joseph, touchdown. This one also from 10 yards out, 23-16 Sarasota High. Then in the fourth, Ben is driving to try and tie it. The ball gets laid on the ground. Joel Radovich will pick it up. And just like Radmobile, these guys are too young to remember that. He's off to the races. The defensive end finding the end zone for the game ceiling score, 91 yards, 30-16. Sailors win it. Well, like I told you, we practiced the run game all week, and we worked on it last week. So we knew we were going to have to have that, and it was a pleasant surprise that we were able to come out tonight and just be able to grind it out. We didn't stop the run all night. Um, we did stop the big play. Uh, our DBs played well, didn't let everybody get behind them, but we, we weren't able to stop the run. And um, we had three fumbles inside the 20. Um, you can't do that against a good team. That's just giving up three scores, and we, they actually returned one, so it's tough to win that way. All right, so Sarasota High has now won two in a row at home. They're two and one on the season. Venice drops to two and one. They take on 5A counterpart Lakewood Ranch next week. Don? All right, thanks a lot, Ben. Manatee in Southeast is a big Manatee County rivalry, and they played tonight at the Hurricanes place. Leah Sicano was there for ABC7, and here she is. Well, if you didn't get in settled in early in this one, you would have been completely surprised at what happened early on in this game. Let's get right to the highlights. It was a great game. Southeast jumping out to an early lead because the offense for Manatee had some problems handling the snap. They got away from the shotgun early on in the game because of that. That's the safety. Southeast up 2-0. Knowles get the ball back on the free kick, and Southeast O-line says up Desmond Blue. He's gone. He's not feeling blue. 38 yards for the score, 9-0 southeast. Problems would continue for Manatee. Look at this. The botched snap. It's recovered in the end zone. Francisco Marino with the touchdown, 16-0 southeast. Manatee would finally get on the board. Carnes on the keeper, 16-7 at the half. And that's when the Sugar Canes would do their little dance. There's the alums all back doing their thing, that would bring the Hurricanes to their feet, get the tempo going a little bit for the second half of action for Manatee, and that's when Ben Axum takes over and scores 16-14 at that point. In the fourth, the very first play of the fourth, Carnes up top to Eric Williams, and the speedster makes a little nifty move here. He's gone. Big play on the game. Manatee with their first lead, 21 to 16. With about four minutes to go in the game, Carlton Wilkinson on the pitch. He hits the outside. He's gone around the corner, finds the end zone. 28 unanswered points. 28 to 16. Duncan Insminger with two INTs late, and Manatee is, remains undefeated at 3 0. Defense did a great job shutting them out. Manatee adjusted and got into a little rhythm there. And in the second half, when we came out, we just gave them too short a field. Too. Second half, we got to come out strong. We got to play Manatee football. Everyone falls short in the first half. But we came back out the team on the second half, so we did. We wanted to come out strong. We know we're facing a good ball club, and everybody want to um, everybody want to see us win. So we had to come out here and put a W up on the board, and that's what we did. We fought hard and fought to the end. Don, Manatee seniors get their first win against Southeast, so that's some uh, rejuvenation into their program as they hit now the second half of the road in the district schedule. And I have to tell you, I really think that Southeast is a team that we'll be reckoned with. They are a very good 0-3 football team. Don, back to you. Thanks a lot, Leah. What a game. And St. Stephen's, the Falcons took on Out of Door Academy in an early game. And the fans were out and drove, 6-0 ODA, but the Falcons' Sean McCarthy looks for and finds Alex Freeland, who finds the end zone for a 7-6 Falcons lead. But Wayman Bowden, the Thunder's human wrecking ball, going to take the pitch from the pummeled Tony Gurry. He got hit after he pitched it, and he will find a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow. They get the two-point conversion. They are up 14-7, second verse, same as the first. Bowden does it again from the exact same spot. ODA goes on to win 28-7. Stay tuned because we have more hard-hitting action coming up. And don't forget, you can log on after the game to MySunCoast.com to see the show anytime you want. Here are some road scores for the Suncoast Away games.
may be the first to get one, but you're certainly not going to be the last. The Toyota Tundra, engineered with an imposing 381 horsepower V8 engine. We didn't redesign the Toyota Tundra, we redesigned the truck. With available cash back and the XSP Sport Package discount, get 5000 in total savings on the new 07 Tundra Double Cab SR5. Toyota, moving forward. Nissan engineers know the backbone of any truck is its frame. That's why the Nissan Titan's frame is fully boxed. Unlike competitor C frames that are prone to flexing, our box frame is the strongest truck frame we've ever built. Just one more reason, it's the Titan of trucks. The new 2008 full-size Nissan Titan. Now get up to $3,500 Nissan cashback or 1.9% APR financing. Don't just watch racing, get behind the wheel. That's like racing right there. Ride the exclusive NASCAR Simulator Thrill Ride. Feel every bump, curve, and crash in this virtual reality experience. You can ride the race for free at Darby Buick Pontiac GMC in Venice. Saturday, October 13th, enjoy a free lunch catered by Sunny's Barbecue from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Be there to see if you've won two tickets to the Nextel Cup race in Homestead. Get in the race. Even a full-size luxury SUV designed to embrace the driver should be a statement in refined amenities. Optional seating for eight and technology for everyone. The new QX56. Exclusively with XM satellite radio with XM nav traffic and a complimentary three-year subscription for both from Infinity. Welcome back to Football Friday Night here on ABC7. Raymond Woody Jr. came over from Bayshore to Palmetto last year, and it was his first year on the sidelines that he did not go to the playoffs. He and the Tigers seemed determined not to let that happen again. There's Woody Jr. on the sidelines, roaming. He and Palmetto 2-0 coming into tonight's Lakewood Ranch game. Brian Smith going up top for Lewis Goff Jr., one of his favorite targets. But Key Warren Jones laying the wood. Oh, my gosh. He puts the kibosh on that play. Next play, very same play, very same thing. This time, Donald Campbell comes down with it. The rainbow for the touchdown, a 7-0 lead. Oh, nice. Quarterback Brian Smith again runs. This time, he's going to take it himself. Oh, oh nice. Oh, he left the jockstrap on the ground. Oh, my goodness. He goes. He doesn't get in for the score. But he does set up his one-yard TD plunge. A lot different than that long run. Beautiful play. And then we're going to see Trevion Murray right here. Or maybe we won't, but it, here he comes. He's going to take the ball, and he's going to carry like eight guys on him after he catches his pass. Nobody can get him down. He's like Earl Campbell, Mike Allstop. Look at them all piling on. Nobody could do it. Hey, the Tigers win huge, 38-0 over the ranch. Ronnie Hardison making his first start for Riverview. First quarter, Kathleen already up 6-0, and Antoine Wilson finds T.J. Lawrence in the corner of the end zone. Nice play right there. Riverview blocked the point after, and Kathleen was up 12-0. Second quarter, Riverview trying to get on the scoreboard. Hardison decides to keep it himself. Nice move. He, he breaks the tackle. They couldn't take him down by the shirt. There he goes into the end zone. It is a touchdown, 30 yards on the play. Kathleen blocked the point after, so Riverview trail by stick, and it just wasn't getting any better for them. They lost tonight by a score to Kathleen. And do we have that score? But they look, Kathleen won big in that one over Riverview. Riverview right now is not having a good season. Port Charlotte, new head coach Dave Hoffer playing their home opener tonight against the Lehigh Lightning. And Buccaneer Philip Buchanan's 